Hola bandidos, ¿cómo estamos? How are you guys doing? Welcome to Mel's Magic. I'm Magic Mel and this is Owl, one of my spirit guides. I'm happy to see you here. So I'm really enjoying this beautiful light in the afternoon. It gives a special kind of theatrical effect here. I'm thoroughly enjoying that. And I wanted to share a sequel to yesterday's video where I shared how I shared the importance of following our internal guidance system no? that's made up of our intuition, our sacral, our gut response and our emotions. They're all tools that help us navigate this 3D reality and they're indicators whether we're out of alignment or in alignment, whether something out there is for us or not so good for us. And I must say that Emotional literacy is one of the things that I'm just coming to learn now over the recent one, two years. I feel we evolve or we grow on kind of different speeds and different aspects of our life. No? So maybe professionally we're where we feel up here and then in relationships we're down here, our relationship with ourselves primarily, or our emotional literacy is down here. And you know what? It's okay. We're not, we're not born perfect. We're never going to be perfect. It's never about perfection, but it's essentially about getting to know ourselves. And by knowing ourselves, learning how to navigate our manifestations, our experience of life more joyfully, more effortlessly and smoother. Okay. So I was sharing yesterday how I also still struggle with discerning my gut response as a human design generator. I'm encouraged to follow my gut, to listen to my gut and to trust my gut. And I have to admit, it's not easy always because like I said yesterday, my mind is very quick to jump in and over rationalize um, a reason to follow the mind rather than my gut feeling and for an overthinker um, for someone who's lived in fear most of my life and for someone who's practicing constant surrender and 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 trust in the present moment it's a daily challenge sometimes a moment to moment challenge but we're always you know there's the same Life doesn't throw anything at us, at us that we're not ready to tackle. So let's ground ourselves in our power and in our immense resources we can tap into. And in let's ground ourselves in the perspective that everything works for us. You know, life is not against us. So-called problems are actually challenges and opportunities to empower ourselves, to get to know ourselves, to overcome our limitations and to step into our power more and more and more. Malin. So um, I want to take one of a, a, a very grounded example of my own learning, <laughs> daily learning experience as an example. I was telling you how I'm trying, I'm practicing following my gut because in the past, not following my gut, not trusting my sacral response made me extremely ill. So learning the hard way, you know, sometimes life taps us at the shoulder, hey, you should do things differently. And we're like, whatever. And then it throws a little brick, oi, you're down the wrong path. And we're like, whatever. And then a huge truck drives through our window. And we're like, what the hell? And the universe is like, well, you didn't listen, did you? So I learned the hard way to, to trust, to, 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 to practice trusting my gut because not trusting it leads me down the path of unwellness and undisalignment. So, um, however, this is all good, you know, in theory, but let's bring it down to 3D concrete examples. I am a recovering people pleaser also, and I find it difficult to say no to things sometimes. And there was one situation where, for example, I was invited to something. <laughs> and if I think back, my immediate body response was, you know, a kind of contracting feeling, a kind of, uh -uh. 
But my mind overrode that sensation and said, why not? They're good people. You should blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And, and that kind of feeling was kind of, it was continuous, you know, just under the surface, but my mind was the dominant narr narrator. And up to that moment, I, I, up to yesterday, I went ahead with that invitation, although I, at the gut level, I didn't feel like going for no other reason that I didn't feel like going, but I still went out of all my self egos justifications. I still went. And I, I must admit also, I went because I wanted to take it as an experiment, a, a harmless, or what seemed as a harmless, a safe experiment. It was no, I knew that even if it went wrong, it was not, you know, a life decision. It was a manageable worst outcome. So I said, okay, I'm just gonna go anyway now. And I wanna see how this plays out, knowing that deep down, my deep knowing was, my gut level knowing was, do not go. I still went the other way and said, eh, yeah, but for so-and-so reasons, I'm gonna, I decide to still go, even though you're telling me not to go. <laughs> and honestly, it didn't take long for me to be in that situation, to be in that invitation where I checked in with myself and I'm like, and you know, my higher self was like, do you now get why we didn't want you to go? <laughs> And I had to humble myself and like, okay, you were right. Higher self, God was like, we told you, you didn't listen, we told you. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but I just wanted to try it out. So basically, it was just a wrong situation. I was not really up for socializing, especially not in a big group. If you are an empath, um, you may resonate with this. You know, it's difficult for empaths to be in large crowds because let's say we, we also have an open emotional center that means I easily absorb other people's emotions and energies and I need to consciously shield myself so as not to get overwhelmed energetically but because I was always you know there was a kind of cold coming up <laughs> you see last day's video I was scratching my nose a lot because it was literally itching and I was trying not to sneeze so I was fighting off a kind of oncoming cold and I also forgot to create this to ground myself first and create an energetic shield so when i stepped into the crowd i immediately sensed this oh you know that kind of feeling where i was like oh oh shit this is too much <laughs> and i'm also very sensitive with sound noise um in any case i was sitting there realizing admitting to myself that it had been the wrong move but extending compassion to myself saying well it's your choice be the moment don't resist it try and welcome it and try and play with those energies one of my strategies was to allow other people to speak so i was like oh you know just here and there posing questions and they kind of automatically streamed out with their answers which in a way helped me because i just didn't have the energy to talk myself and i tried to take the entire experience as a learning curve, as a lesson, which if we take that perspective, you know, that every moment is a lesson, it, it empowers us. We get out of our victim stance, oh, this is happening to me and step into, okay, this is a scenario of actually manifested. If you're really brutally honest, I created this, I decided to go. And what is the lesson here? What can we take out of this? And I spent the morning reflecting on it. I went for my walk. Again, the beautiful October light is nudging me to take these morning walks. And when I walk, it's, it, you know, this motorized motion helps my breathing, remember, grounding into my body and helps me reflect and process things. And I came to a wonderful list of, of um, things I, 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 I discovered about myself through that very trivial experience of going to an invite I didn't want to actually go to. And um, it was definitely the, what do you call it? Not the needle in the haystack. It was the final straw for my own realization that I do not function well in large groups because I cannot manage the overwhelm of energies. And also, to be honest, I don't like small talk. I like meaningful one-on-one -on -one, um, conversations. So that I realized about myself. 
um, I realized that malgré the situation, the discomfort of being in the situation, a pesar de eso, um, despite of the discomfort, uncomfortable situation, I was still able to self-soothe. So there are certain mudras I do um, when I'm in the public, when I'm in, in the outer space to help me stay centered. I did connect to my breath and I was even able to zoom out of myself and observe myself operating in this situation. It's a technique that I use sometimes in meditation where, you know, you come into your body and then you zoom out of your, your body and you observe yourself. And then I take it one step further. I observe the observer and observe the observer and the observer. Like I didn't feel to realize that um, you are more than this. You can actually zoom out. And from that perspective, I can also quite literally enter into this observant mode, observe myself, my behavior, the way I react, and I can observe other people. And I learned a lot of lessons <laughs> also about other people. But let me just maybe share a bit. Um, yeah, the, the, the good takeaway is that I can trust my sacral response. I can trust my gut, even though... I mean, my gut told me a week ago, do not go, basta. But my mind kind of argued with it and tried to find reasons to go. My takeaway is that you don't need another reason more than you just don't feel like going. That's enough of a reason. So I will from now on give myself the permission to trust that sacral gut response as a simple yes or no. No further questions asked. That's a huge realization. Um, I also realized, I also reflected on, well, if you felt like not going but still went, what is the reasons your mind was giving you to still go? And, you know, I had to be really honest with myself. And it came down to this very ingrained, still operating or slowly losing its grip, but still their modus, modus operandi of pleasing others, trying to please others. And I'm very, not hard with myself on this, but I'm very, I'm trying to be very brutally honest with, with this people pleasing attitude because it doesn't serve me. And to be honest, it doesn't even serve other people because by pleasing others, and by forcing ourselves to do something that we actually don't want to do, we're being ingenuine, we're being inauthentic. Meaning we're deceiving ourselves and we're deceiving the other people. We're not being truthful. We're not acting out of integrity. We're not acting out of alignment. And I was watching myself. I wasn't even fully there. You know, there were conversations going on. And I observed myself kind of zooming in and out of conversations, you know, switching off. <laughs> and I'm like, Melanie, that's not very okay, whatever, polite or not polite, but it's just not truthful. You're only half here anyway. Who are you trying to kid? And it's kind of giving other people only half of your attention. And I ask myself, do you want others to treat yourself like that? If somebody invites someone and somebody's sitting there and only half there is zoning out, it's not very... I don't want to use the word nice, I don't like the word nice, but it's not very sincere or respectful. And I want to be respectful as first and foremost with myself. I wasn't respecting myself, I wasn't respecting my true feeling. And I talk a lot about truth maybe. I do not want to talk about the absolute truth, I only want to talk about my truth the truth I resonate with and I feel is my truth for myself. And it, everyone, you know, we all have different operating system, different mechanism and someone else, we, there are as many truths out there as we are human beings. For me to say my truth is your truth is, um, what's the right word? Arrogant, <laughs> yeah? So I was just saying I wasn't being truthful with myself. And the mere reason of not wanting to disappoint the other person is not a reason enough to, to override my own integrity. 
I've decided how would I do it next time? I will just go with that gut instinct and practice honest communication. And and that's another tricky one, no? Well, and I feel it's actually one of the reasons I still went ahead because I didn't know, well, what can I say to them, you know? Oh, I don't feel like going. I mean, you don't have to be like that blatant. But I feel speaking our truth and communicating it also in a kind and graceful way is another skill we can learn. And we only learn by applying things, by putting things into practice. So again, let's use every situation that life brings us, brings into our experience as something, a moment where we can discover ourselves and, and put things into practice, our values, our truth, our communication, and the, the small treasures we can find in every situation. So. Another takeaway is, was, as I told you, you know, I was, regardless of the discomfort, able to self-soothe, so well done, proud of myself. <laughs> I was able not to force myself to eat and drink things that I didn't feel like eating, because actually, because of the whole overwhelm, I, I wasn't even hungry anymore. I was kind of picking things here and there, but then I checked in with myself and I said, Mel, you're not even hungry anymore. So I said, so don't eat, it's okay. And don't... Um, drink wine if you don't feel like drinking it just because it's there doesn't mean you have to drink it you know and appear to whatever be part of the game so i didn't i was again proud of myself and i was in the end <coughs> i mean it became let's say noise um noise pollution wise so difficult for me that i just had to pull a french exit <laughs> Part of me was thinking, well, you're already in that situation, you might as well ride it out. But the one point I'm like, stop it, just cut the crap, you know, cut cut your own bullshit, Melanie, and just do a French exit. I didn't want it to cause a big commotion, like, I am now leaving because I'm not feeling well. No, I just told the, the host, like, excuse me, please excuse me. I'm super grateful for the invite, it was a lovely dinner, but I need to take care of myself. You know, pull it back to yourself, don't make it like, you know, try and reduce them feeling discomfort although we're not responsible for the response but put it more back to us I need to take care of myself you know that's something what can you say against that you know <laughs> so as you can see me almost consciously not following my gut and using it as an experiment um, brought these pearls of wisdom and with this first of October I'm like I told myself man this is the last time you're putting yourself in that kind of situation. Why? Because also I'm realizing more and more my time is precious. Other people's time is precious. I don't want to waste nobody's time. I don't want to waste my time. I don't waste, want to waste my energy. I've got, you know, let's eliminate, let's be truthful and focus and cut out things that are not resonating with us. People that don't resonate anymore with us, as difficult as it may, as it may be. And also when I asked myself, how come you still went, gave in and went with that, although you didn't feel like it. And part of me, I was honest. I'm like, there was a fear of, you know, as a human being, I feel we all have this longing to belong. It's so primal. We're very tribal in our being. We're relational beings. So part of me was like, yeah, but... Wouldn't it be nice to socialize a bit and be part of this group? So again, I extend compassion to that reason, fair, fair enough reason. But one thing is wanting to belong. And the other thing is trying to fit a square pin into a round hole, like trying to belong somewhere where you just simply don't. Trying to fit into a group that does not resonate with you anymore, quite honestly. And the fear is like, oh, if I do not join this group, then I'm going to be alone. You know? And then I was like, well, let's look at it objecti objectively. Is it better to be on your own or to be with a group you don't resonate with? Better to be on my own. Well, at least I, I do enjoy my company. I hope you do too. <laughs> you know, we got to learn to... Um, enjoy our own company, to be good on our own. And I'm not talking about taking things to extreme and isolating ourselves out of fear um, of reaching out and connecting with others. I, no, 
coming from a place of self-worth and self-love and, and being okay with yourself, not needing others to distract you or fill a void again, you know, this void. Um, and I guess that the essence of it is always this question, am I coming from love or am I coming from lack or fear? What kind of paradigm am I choosing? There's always two ways, no? Lack, fear, scarcity, peace, abundance, love, compassion, all the good stuff. And it's constantly, you know, like life is going like this. It's always two choices. Which way? Moment by moment, I'm choosing my own timeline. Every choice I make either, you know, puts me more into alignment or out of alignment. And it's okay to get out of alignment, just like my situation, my little experience yesterday. It's okay. No big deal. Don't beat yourself up for having done the wrong choice, <laughs> having gone against yourself. This is not to reinforce self-punishment and making yourself feel guilty and small. It's about, again, realizing, well, what is better for me? What is, more, what is the more nourishing choice? And if the more nourishing choice is to be on my own for, uh, with myself, is it that bad? Not really, no? So I wanted to just um, share that experience with you after telling you yesterday that I still have my conflicts. And those conflicts are, you know, the aim also is not to transcend the human experience of con this contrasting reality and be on some kind of like bubble cloud up there, like untouchable. No, I want, I want to be right here in the dirt <laughs> and use the mud as futile, fertile, not futile, sorry, fertile ground for me to grow my own lotus. I don't want to deny the darkness for some extreme unhealthy striving towards the light, no. What I want, what I'm striving for is a sense of balance. And even balance is never static because life is not static. So it's, as I said, it's a constant, you know, um, tapping your way forward, you know. Does this feel good? Yes, no. Does this feel good? Yes, no. Not even having to know the entire unfolding of the entire journey. <laughs> How boring would that be? But just step by step moment by moment, situation by situation, choice by choice, feeling by feeling, that's all we're called to do for, you know, even in the great Our Father prayer, um, one line is, give us this day our daily bread, even in this powerful prayer, which is highly symbolic, we're not asking for, Give me the bread for the entire span of the rest of my life. <laughs> Just give me today. Give me what I need today. My daily bread. And let that be enough. Let today be enough. Let this moment be enough. And, um, yeah, I was also, I had these kind of grandiose plans for today. But just working, taking the time to process things. The processing allows us to integrate experiences. I'm so pro <laughs> slowing down, not overwhelming myself, even with experiences. This trivial dinner experience is is so rich in meaning and so rich in lessons. This is one little event. So if I fill my day with stuff to do and just stuff, I don't have time to process things. And I really want to process things and take things at a natural, humane, digestible rhythm. And that's, again, super personal. We all have our own rhythms, all processing time. I'm also coming to realize, you know, to have the humility to allow, give myself the space and time and to give others the space and time and not to claim that I know best what their speed is and how, you know, no, that's again very, I don't know what, what a synonym of arrogant is here, but you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I know better than you. No, I can only speak for myself. 
So I wrote down all of these, these reflections and I look back at them and I'm like, wow, that is work. This is work. Processing is work. Taking time out to is, is work. And resting is work. I really allow myself to be more rather than just constant doing. And I want my doing to come from a quality state of being. And I decide what that state of being is. If I'm nervous or tired and I do stuff, it doesn't have that quality I want to bring to the table. I want to operate from a sense of groundedness, a sense of joyful presence. I don't want to pretend and deceive myself also, no? If the energy is not there, it's not there, period. No questions asked, no need to further justify. And that is a whole new topic, no? Like going with the flow, oh my God, how many times have we heard, uh, how many times have we heard that? <laughs> Just go with the flow, whatever that means. And now I'm realizing, yeah, I wanna go downstream the river of life. You know, instead of paddling upstream and exhausting myself, I want to float. I think it's also ta Taoism, uh, Tao, flow with the river, surrender, all is well. All is well. If only I can drop my fretting. <laughs> so, and that really comes back to, well, then if I want to go with the flow, I need to understand my flow. I need to understand my energy flows, my rhythm. I um, need to trust that that rhythm and pace is perfect because it's mine. It's auto-generated, it comes from within. It's not imposed by anyone out there. I don't need someone to tell me how to flow. That's their perception. What is my feeling of flow? So, <laughs> if I look at it sometimes, you're kind of born into this world with no navigation system, like, ah, what the hell? And we learn how to do things as we get to know ourselves and learn these lessons. And in learning these lessons, we become more graceful, you know, when we stop striving and are more relaxed and centered. So, it is a difficult journey, but as I mention often, uh, there is beauty. There is so much beauty to found and find in this in this discovery, in this journey. And let's remember to also laugh about ourselves. <laughs> you know, even with this misstep yesterday of going against my gut, I was still able to ma uh, laugh about it, laugh it off, like take it. Don't make it so hard. Don't be so hard on yourself. See the silver lining and remember to smile it off also. You know? <laughs> and again, I learn about myself and also learn about other people, like learning the dynamics between people and people talking over each other and projecting their own story and actually not really listening to you. And then saying, well, it's human. We've all done it. <laughs> like, Don't think you know better or that you've never done it. No, I did it before and probably I still do it. And it's fine having the grace to accept our mistakes, to allow, give ourselves permission to make mistakes and slightly calibrate to our, you know, recalibrate. We bump into things and we recalibrate. It's never a straight line. It's more of like a boom, 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 boom. And the more we learn, the more we go along, we can do a bit more gracefully. That's fine. It's fine at your own pace, your own rhythm, your own flow. Okay, so I want to leave it at that regarding my little experience and I felt inclined to pull a Wisdom of the Oracle card. It's one of my favorite oracles. I've already cleared the space and uh, yeah, let's see what the oracle tells us. But for our state of being right here, right now, for you, I, I always the card for you here is listening and watching and for myself also we are reflections of each other we are at least in this space connected and vamos let's go ahead so dear beautiful oracle um, what is a word of advice you have for us everyone here watching thank you so much
Ooh, it was fast. Okay. The card is Imagine. Oh gosh, it reminds me of the song that said John Lennon, Imagine. Beautiful, beautiful song. Um, so before I look at the booklet, let's just look at the colors. I mean, you know, the cards never, if it's in the, in the reverse, it's not like a bad omen. It's just maybe a reminder, gentle reminder to do things differently, but there's always constructive advice here. So let's look at it upright for a minute. We see, imagine, we see the moon, we see this expansive sky, blue wide horizons. Just like today, I was looking in the sky and, and it was a bit windy. And I love it when it's windy because it disperses. You know, the clouds move fast, the humidity is um, moved and it's usually very good visibility. So it literally felt a bit like this expansive sky. And yeah, we see the moon up there. It looks like dreamy, expansive, um, imaginative, full of possibilities. That's how I read this card. Maybe in the reverse is I would read it as it's precisely that a reminder that hey you know our consciousness is our portal to limitless and infinite possibilities the quantum field is an infinite field of possibilities and it's our mind that pulls a particle makes a particle out of a wave and manifests it by our attention into this reality so I'm reading it as, let's remember the, the power of our imagination. Let's remember that our power lies in the choice of following one thought or the other. Again, I've said this before, but, you know, heaven and hell are just one thought away. I can, if a negative thought comes, I can either follow it or I can decide to release it and choose another stream of thought. Start with one thought and have it snowball into a positive direction. So how do we use our imagination? Do we use it and do we appreciate it as this miraculous tool of manifestation? Are we using it to create the kind of thoughts, beliefs and actions that of our desires to manifest our desires or are we putting our imagination and attention to things we don't actually want to see in the world where is our attention where is our imagination how are we using it are we using our imagination creatively do we then trust and believe that we are worthy in creating and, and, and fulfilling the desires that we come up with that we imagine yes or no I mean it's a powerful card and it also reminds me to look up into the sky you know sometimes we can't see the forest for the trees or the trees for the forest we get so bottled down in the me uh, narrow vision me and we forgot to we forget to expand our vision and zoom out you know be the observer of our own thoughts and realize the expansiveness of life the mystery of life the the gift that life is and our capacity to always choose differently even though we have gone the so-called wrong wrong path there is no final punto final in our story there's no final punto okay at some point we're going to exit this vessel of our body but the journey man, in my belief it continues so let's give us the grace to make mistakes and imagine a new dare to imagine differently, dare to use our imagination for something constructive, for those realities and timers that we want to manifest into this reality, into the 3D. Hmm? And let's see what the booklet has to say. It's number 20. One second. I'm also thinking of doing a live, so-called live streaming on Sunday, next Sunday, the 9th of October okay I'm putting it out there in case one of you who's watching wants to join that and we can have what it seems a conversation I'm all about conversations and also the 9th of October I think is a full moon so auspicious day
Vale, getting distracted. 20. I noticed I count in German. Okay, imagine. Imagine. Essential meanings. Turning imagination into manifestation. Creative thought. Visualization. The power of aligning imaginary and feelings. Sorry, the power of aligning imagery and feelings. Creativity. Illusions. So, the oracle's message. Can you see? Who do you want to be? What do you need to believe in in order to have the life you want? You were given the power to imagine. If you can dream it, you can create it. This is a time when your imagination is the key to manifesting the life you desire. Spend time daydreaming, fashioning a vision board to help you see your goals or meditating. Allow the power of your creativity to deliver images of what, of what feeds your soul. Then allow your feelings to mingle with your inspirations and imagine, imagine these things being real right now. Then repeat. When you imagine, what you imagine will become your belief and soon you will see these things come to pass in the outer world as if by magic. Because remember, as within, so without. We live in a hall of mirrors, in a holographic universe. What you experience in your outer reality is a reflection of your inner state. So seize this tool of imagination to create the life of your dreams. Okay, it's in the reverse, so it's a bit of a, it's a warning, a pr protection message. Illusions and wishful thinking rooted in the sense of lack have entered your life. Now may be the time to see things as they truly are and not as you hoped or imagined they would be. Release any fear, then envision anew. Perhaps you are anticipating that something fearful might happen and recreating that image of disaster over and over in your mind, like the news does, repeating the same story of destruction, of fear, of catastrophe, until we just like numb out. Don't let that happen to you. Watch your space and nourish your mind with nourishing thoughts and beliefs. The universe responds to such projections, so be aware of this catastrophizing. No matter what, illusions and awfulizing are misuse of imagination. Clear your inner slate and stay grounded. Stay real. Only then can you truly have what you desire. Wow. This is dense stuff and <laughs> it's a lot to take in. So meditate on this. How are you using your imagination, your thoughts? What are the thoughts you are thinking throughout the day? If you're not aware of it, it's okay. Create space to become aware. Meditation, walking, decluttering your your time your schedule and your space make space for awareness because we cannot change a story that is running on autopilot and that we're not creating space for to change we can only change what we have accepted and what we have become conscious of no so are you consciously using your imaginative powers or not You know, you can even step out into the sky. I don't know where you are at, but if the if the sky out there is not blue and expans feels expansive, then close your eyes and open the window of your mind. Visualize a window right here in your third eye opening. Visualize blue sky and expand yourself through that window. You can access that anywhere you are. Okay. We always have the power to choose. We have, we are human beings, we are multidimensional, we are so powerful, powerful creators of realities, okay? So 
Let's appreciate this gift of imagination we have and let's use it wisely and consciously for the kind of for to create the kind of reality we want to see out there. Yeah. I'll leave you, you with that. I feel complete. And um I'm grateful you were here too for this follow-up session from yesterday's video. Ooh, I like this <laughs> light here. And um, let's sit with that. Let it sink in. Let's process things. And let's remember to have grace with ourselves. Also be compassionate and allowing for mistakes. Yeah. I'm Magic Mail. This is Al, one of my spirit guides. This is my channel, Nell's Magic. I'm always, I'm grateful to have you here. If anything resonates, tell me in the comment box or tune in for next Sunday's live streaming. I'll figure it out in the meantime. If you like my video, hit the like button. It helps my channel grow. If you're so inclined, subscribe to my channel. You can file through or look through Four seasons of my videos is like 89 videos I have in the internet ether by now. You know, I record them at a certain point of time, but they're timeless in, in, in their message. And whenever this video appears in your reality, it's the right time for you to maybe look if something resonates or not. The timing is always perfect in the larger cosmic um, agenda. Okay. And I also want to remind you that I have a PayPal donation link down here and even a coffee uh, link where you can buy me a coffee <laughs> and yes any donation I, I super appreciate it. it helps me just sustain my energy my videos and to keep everything the energy flowing give and receive okay thank you very much I send you infinite love and gratitude and I am looking forward to having you in my next video lots of love bye